Let's book audience too. The internet around uh, the area has been a bit dodgy this morning, as they say. So uh, it's kind of been hit or miss, take it or leave it. And right now, Dylan has the stream up. Hopefully that'll last for a while. So if you're joining us on our Facebook page too, welcome in now. Better late than never. And if you just dropped out again because of the internet, sorry. We'll keep trying as the morning goes along. Our guest in this segment is Kimberly Nelson. She is the Ward 4 uh, Council person in the city of Martinsburg. Kimberly, good morning to you. Thanks for coming in. Good morning to you all. Thanks so much for what you do for the Eastern Panhandle. And thanks for what you do as a teacher because you are shaping the young minds that head out into the world soon enough. And you're at Potomac Intermediate? I am at Potomac Intermediate. Been there for many, many years. Have a great principal here, there, who's allowing me to be here. So. Well, thank you very much. Who's your principal? Uh, Dr. Craig Arch, and he looked at this as a social studies lesson uh, via Miss Nelson for everybody at our well, school. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. So you, you've already been elected to the seat. You are the incumbent. I am the incumbent. Last time I ran, I was unopposed, which was absolutely lovely. And, sure. and this time I am being opposed. So I, I did think it was really important to to articulate, to tell people what was going on in Martinsburg. I know you're seeing a lot of construction around. So I think it's important to lay that out and mm -hmm. tell people what's going on. When you initially took the seat, were you appointed or you won a special election to finish the seat? Um, in 2019, um, it was the tragic death of Mark Baker, mm -hmm. God rest his soul, um, and the council decided to um, that they needed to fill the seat. Nine people came forward. They chose to interview three, and I was chosen unanimously amongst the council. Um, and then when it came to election time a year and a half later, um, I ran unopposed. And four people, three or four, were from Ward 4 and chose to run for the at-large positions, leaving me running unopposed, which was nice. Okay. Well, yeah. why do you want to run for re-election? Well, um, we have so many projects that are in process. It's super exciting. I want to see those come to fruition. We now have a new city manager. Um, named Andy Blake and uh, because our longtime city manager retired he was great but I absolutely love Andy Blake he's really effective um, and I want to see these things happen I'm mm -hmm. particularly happy about connecting all the parks we're doing that um, I it's been my privilege serving it is my privilege serving on the city council for Ward 4, and I've been advocating for many quality of life things for Ward 4 for the downtown area but also um, citywide. So the projects that I have been advocating for are coming to fruition. Um, they're happening. Uh, business registrations are up by 17 percent and I want to keep that momentum going. Um, Y'all might notice all the um, the construction going on along King Street. That's the interwoven. It's been going by different names and I'm not sure what the monuments company is going to call it but mm -hmm. I'm going to call it the interwoven. That investment is north of a hundred million dollars at this point. Um, April, uh, it's coming online in April. Phase one of it is coming online in April. Um, the huge One Life Fitness is coming on, uh, I think, in June. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, there's another large investment coming on down the pike. A little bit too early to talk about that, but it's huge. And do you remember the last time I was here? I was absolutely steadfast. Uh, when it came to all the fear mongering that was going on with the updated zoning or updating the zoning. Mm -hmm. And right after that passed, the company, the Monuments Company, bought the interwoven buildings uh, to renovate them. And longtime, longtime residents remember that most of those buildings had been sitting there ba vacant for decades. Mm -hmm. um, and now our city center is getting a huge investment that I voted to approve. Um, that's all the construction you see. And uh, from the moment that I got on council, I've taken a very active role in improving the quality of life. I am chock-a-block full of ideas. And I go and I sit with staff. And we kind of hash through these things to see what can be done uh, and, and how it might be manifest, what the pricing would be. And then once all that's kind of worked out, then it goes on the agenda and then the full council will vote. So I'm only speaking for myself. I'm sure other council members do the same, but I'm just saying from my perspective, I'm very, very active with these ideas. So uh, one of them was I advocated early on for lots of public outreach, not just one place, but website, Facebook, uh, emails, having automatic emails sent to people, um, streaming our meetings, 
so that people could be in their living rooms and watch council meetings online, live. Um, I met, <laughs> this, was, this was a big idea, I met with uh, staff about the concept of buying up dilapidated properties fixing them up and putting them back on the market so there would be more residential stock in the city. But that is a very complex project and it is definitely best left to the free market. But out of that idea came, um, or out of that conversation rather, came my idea to have a kind of a partnership, a boost from the city. So um, we developed a, um, a fund that had matching grants up to five thousand dollars for people to fix up the front of their building mm -hmm. fix up their facade as in fix your face like my mom from alabama says you know like put your best face forward mm -hmm. um so we had a lot of takers on that but again it has to be kind of worked out hashed out how much money we're going to put into it you know how many people do we want to reach and then it goes on the agenda so it's not so simple as just showing up and voting there's like a, a long process that goes in there before that um so one of the things as i said before that i really um have been excited about is the is the whole park system um and we, these parks are going to be connected as yes. part of the trail system throughout the city that will extend into the county as well yes so right now we've got completed the frog hollow trail that's a mile long you can be walking in the middle of martinsburg and it just feels lush like you're in a forest in and you're downtown i mean you're in the middle of town it's really cool so i invite people to go out there and and, and check it out where do you pick it up um down there by um john street so it goes behind um let's see john street and it goes all past berkeley heights elementary school so you can get it on that end south end and then all the way north up to mm -hmm. as john goes to oh come on well, that's okay we can yeah. come back to that yeah. Um, now, before you go through some of the other things, mm -hmm. I know Bill and John have some questions for you, too. So, Bill, go right ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning, Kimberly. Glad good to. Good morning, Bill. <laughs> Thanks for joining <laughs> us today. Uh, I have a couple of questions, but first, where is Ward 4? Ward 4 is predominantly the downtown area, um, and it has this really long pipe, if you will, goes up to Weiss Market, so okay. up that way, up Queen Street, it's to the left of Queen Street. So it's on the west side of Queen Street. Uh, Ward 5 is on the east side of Queen Street, kind of divides it up there. Um, it's predominantly north of King Street, and it goes from the railroad tracks on the west to the railroad. Sure, the okay, thank okay. you. Uh, during the past, uh, last several years, mm -hmm. there's the relationship with the county and the city have been somewhat cyclical, sometimes mm -hmm. working very well together, uh, other times less so. Uh, at one time, we used to have regular meetings between the county council and mm -hmm. the city council. Mm -hmm. Does that still happen? If not, should that continue to happen? Um, I have not been a part of it, and um, but I'm definitely in favor of it. I think there should be a lot of cooperation uh, between city and county, cities and the county. Um, we have, oh, you know, our Venn diagrams overlap in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And if there had been personality conflicts in the past, I think those are pretty much eliminated. There's probably a lot of meetings going on, um, just, you know, on the side. But uh, as of officially, I have not been a part of any official meetings. Yeah, uh, this was uh, uh, no action taken just for communication, just so that the communication doors open. Yeah, understand what absolutely. Happened. But there was one at one time where some action was taken, and that was joint city county talking to our legislators mm -hmm. so that we would send the same common message to the mm -hmm, legislators. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I know that uh, Mayor Kevin Knowles is great with his outreach. Yeah. He does a lot of traveling. He does a lot of talking on behalf of the city. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's, a, I think, a wonderful representative. He is that, but I'm talking about this joint approach. Uh, approach. Uh, the, the in actuality, as well as the perception of the city and the council having, excuse me, the city and the county mm -hmm. having worked together so they have a common objective that they're mm -hmm. requesting from the legislators. Well, I'm definitely open yeah. to it. I'll yeah. just say that. Okay. Yeah. 
Mr. Gilstrap. Um, I'm relatively new to the area, mm-hmm. and uh, I moved in in the height of COVID. So mm-hmm. Martinsburg was a ghost town, right? Yeah. It was like it was like the zombie apocalypse. Right. And in and that amount of time, it seems that a, a lot of life has has returned mm-hmm. to um, the downtown area, the historic area. Yes. But there's still a lot of empty storefronts. Sure. And a lot of so is that. Is that a lack of interest in businesses wanting to move in? Is no. it the rates are too high? No. It's what's what's going on there? So glad you asked that question. All right. <clears throat> so, um, pardon me. <clears throat> um, I met um, early on with an investor um, who was interested in investing in downtown Martinsburg. And by the way, thank you for moving here during the pandemic because a lot of people like you did. <laughs> yeah. It's, and I think you live in the county, right? I do. Okay. So welcome, so, John. Yes, Glad you. to have welcome. you here. Finally, finally somebody in this studio yes. has well, said something nice to me. <laughs> but, but you know, he kind of trolled for that answer. He really <laughs> just set everything up so we had to say welcome, Hey, you got to be shameless. You got to be shameless. <laughs> so, so anyway, I met with um, an investor who was interested in doing something with the Dun and Seibert building. That was an old appliance building there at King Street in Raleigh. And uh, he asked me, he says, would Martinsburg support a food hall? And I caught the vision. I was like, you mean like Faneuil Hall in Boston? And he said, well, well, yeah, but not quite as big. And I said, absolutely. So if, if you haven't, if you and other folks who are listening haven't been to the Garage on King, please do. It's absolutely lovely. They've got eight restaurants, a bar. They often have live music down there. And just across the street from them is good-natured grocery and cafe. Lovely little spot right there at Raleigh Street. Um, So things are happening. As I said, business registrations are up by 17%. There is definitely momentum as far as businesses go. Here are some, I've got some more examples for you for this renewal process. I did my homework on this. Um, Westwood Charm Boutique has been so successful that they bought their own building and they just opened up last week at their new location. But that meant then that they vacated two um, slots. And uh, that was 145 and 149 North Queen where uh, those are being redone and um, industry professionals say they will easily rent. Uh, 147 next door is going to be a cool martini bar (laughs) called the Young American. Um, The building formerly owned by Craig Manford is going to be an ice cream parlor, and there's going to be a place for tea parties. Are we still in the area of King and Raleigh? At this yes, point? absolutely. We are on Queen Street right here. Okay. We're on Queen. Sorry if I didn't say that. 147 Queen Street next door. Um, ice cream parlor, place for tea parties. Right around the corner is a cute little plant shop called Wandering Roots. Um, they they have activities where people come and make topiaries together, like birthday parties and showers and stuff. Um, above them was vacant for 50 years, and it's now a field office for Keller Williams. Um, Stoney's, a downtown favorite restaurant and bar, April. but that entire corridor of King Street is going to see renewal. So um, there's one building, a commercial space, that's occupied by Progressive Printing, and I just wanted to give them a little... Um, mentioned there they are going to stay even though the building sold but that entire corridor is going to because of market forces I predict um, it's going to be developed so exciting things are happening I walk all over downtown and I do not have any fears you know and and along those sides I I have to put this out too so I don't Uh sound negative on this Um, I grew up in Northern Virginia and Mm -hmm. when I was a kid which was you know a thousand years ago Old Town (laughs) Alexandria which is now the trendy place right was was mostly a slum yeah it was really not Mm -hmm. a place you would want to go so this renewal thing can happen pretty quickly and pretty aggressively yeah I'm super excited about it I see it happening I predicted it was going to happen with the new zoning Um, you you know, it was like last time it was in the 1970s and now we're in the, you know, the two 2020s. And, um, yeah, you can see it all around. Um, what, what about parks and recreation? Okay. Um, uh, is a pool, has a pool been resolved? Will it be open in, um, uh, in the summer? And what other issues do we have with parks and recreation? Yes, sir. If you've driven by um, Woodbury, I was going to say there are some projects that you cannot actually see, but they are underway. Woodbury, where Lambert Pool mm-hmm. is located, is going to be um, um, – there's, there's going to be a traffic calming there. We'll say that. 
and uh, Lambert Pool is all dug up all around. You can see that, um, where we have a company that is changing out the pipes so that we can reuse that again. We can get more years out of Lambert Pool, so that's pretty exciting. Has the leakage problem been resolved? I believe so. The same company that's doing the work is going to be the company that opens it to the public. So they're, you're taking full responsibility for this. Um, so looking forward, they'll take, they're going to do the renovation now, but the same company will do the maintenance, long, uh, both near-term and long-term maintenance? Um, as far as long-term maintenance, I don't know. It kind of makes logical sense that they yeah. would, um, but they will be the ones that open it up to make sure, sure that okay. everything runs smoothly for the opening. Um, while I'm on the same topic, uh, the train station is getting a renovation and the market house. What about the train? What renovation are you doing at the train station? Um, they're kind of modest um, cosmetic ones. It's not, it's not a huge thing. Um, like fixing decks, paint, um, modernizing the security systems there, that kind of thing. As far as the, uh, the cosmetics, it's in pretty good shape now. Yeah, it yeah. is. So. Yeah, and, and, yeah it's, and it's well used. Yeah. Um, the market house that's owned by the city is going to go mm -hmm. through okay. major renovations soon. Um, so, I, I mean, really, I know you've not been here for very long, but, I mean, for you two long-timers, hasn't the city been looking a whole lot better over the last five years? I think there's been dramatic improvements. Woohoo! Yeah. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, well, I, I want to ask you about the roundhouse here too, and and what is the city's involvement in regards to the roundhouse? I know the roundhouse has its own organization mm -hmm. that's in charge of it. Yes. And I know that there's been talks between the city and that committee about further city involvement and investment. What are your thoughts on the future of the roundhouse and its improvements? Um, well, I do think that the roundhouse historically and visually is a crown jewel of Martinsburg. Um, and I would like to see good things for it. Um, I don't have enough right now on it to speak on, on that kind of cooperation. I do know that sometimes uh, roundhouse authority people might come to council asking for things, but um, they're huge heavy lifts and they're mm -hmm. best done by grants. And um, so I don't know. I can't really speak to that, Rob. Do you? Do you? What about you personally, in terms of mm -hmm. a long-term view of the Roundhouse? Because you said it's the crown jewel. It, it is certainly very unique, mm -hmm. and it could be very attractive. Oh, but yeah. It's probably scraping only two percent of its potential right oh, now in terms of what the future could be mm -hmm. with that. Do you have a long-term vision for it? Um, I wish that it would become an enormous event space, like a concert space. That would be like a um, an amphitheater on one side where the ruins are, um, and um, a, a convention center, if you will. But also um, to preserve that turntable where the big engines came in. Mm -hmm. If you've never, have you ever been down in there? Well, and yeah. Looked up. Do, the home show has been there oh, the last couple of years. No, I mean like go down in the pit and look up. It's mm -hmm. deeply fascinating at just the massive undertaking that that was. So I think it could be an integrated museum in the same space so anybody that comes through on conventions could uh take a tour if you will like go down in there where it's all greasy and you know weird mm -hmm. but but fascinating so you, um you mentioned yeah. grants mm -hmm. uh the uh, senator bird was able to get some substantial money in the mm -hmm. early days to do a lot of the uh structural rep needed repairs not too much cosmetic but structural uh have there been other large grants in the past my sense is uh the uh, the city and the county have not been overly successful in getting grants sufficient to make the major renovations are you talking about for the roundhouse for the roundhouse have there been a lot have there been significant grants yeah it's received? it's kind of under the uh, roundhouse authority at this point so if they have grant people doing that then then that's their baby, if you will. It's not something that the city has done, even though the roundhouse is in the city. You you are raising a very a subject that I've thought about a lot in the past. It seems to me that the city and the county both want to take credit for the roundhouse, but do not want to take ownership mm. of the roundhouse mm. and mm. its problems. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you did just then what mm -hmm. I've heard mm -hmm. several of the people say in the past, that it's their responsibility, not our responsibility. All right. And I think that's uh -huh. one of the problems uh -huh. that the roundhouse has not been able to develop as well as it should. I think your earlier comment about city and county cooperation, yeah. that would go 
under that category of city and county cooperating on the roundhouse specifically. But again, taking credit and doing the peripheral kind of on the edges, but not the ownership of bringing the roundhouse up to the to being the crown jewel that it could be or should be. It's going to take a lot of money to do that, and we actually have to change the demographics in town to make that happen. You have to have enough people who want to come to a convention in Martinsburg. The city of Martinsburg changed the direction of the road that leads to it, so it's nice and straight. That's what the city of Martinsburg did, and that was a... I mean, it, it was an undertaking, but it, I think it was a pretty straightforward, simple ask, mm -hmm. straightforward literally and figuratively. And now, um, and we took care of some buildings that were right yeah. there that were super That's run true. down. So there is, you know, there is cooperation there, definitely. Um, I'd love to see more. I'll just, yeah. I think you and yeah. I are in agreement yeah. on this. Yeah, yeah and I, I was not throwing stones. Again, I have not seen the, the ownership of the county and the city uh, to move the uh, roundhouse. There's been ownership, but mostly uh, uh, verbal. There's not been working together in concert to get the large grants that are needed. And it is large grants. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. little small picking no. grants. It needs yeah. a, no, lot work. Yeah. A, a lot of work. A lot, a lot of work. Yeah. Yes. Kimberly, we have about a minute left. So go ahead and tell folks why they should reelect you. Well, um, if I did want to add, on a human level, I... Two police chiefs ago, I advocated very strongly for putting a, um, a social worker to be on the police force so that when we had, when the police force had those um, mental health calls, they would be led by a mental health professional. I am very, very passionate about that, um, about supporting the businesses, about creating a sense of place. I have been working my level best to create a beautiful place for people to live, um, to visit, to work, uh, connecting the parks, and I just want to see that going. I mean, like you said, the place has been looking fantastic, 100%, right? That's going to continue. Thank you for coming in and visiting with us. Thank you so much for having me. Best of luck to you in your re-election bid. Thank you. And continued success with the children you work with at Potomac Intermediate. I love what I do. Been I doing it tell. for 22 years. Great energy. <laughs> Thank you. Good job, Kimberly. Thanks so much for coming uh -huh. in. Hey, it's 831.